Hello and welcome to Musician vs. Musician, a podcast slash gig, where every week we talk about a music thing, a band thing, a podcast thing, a topic thing, all the things. Honestly, it could be anything at this point. It could... Oh, man, you should have, like... The rhythm of that was just slightly off, so if you said, it could be anything, it would have worked. It would have been really funny. For me and not the audience who are uh, screaming at us to fucking get on with it. Yeah, sure. So we (laughs) will, because this is a long fucking one this week. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's why I wanted us to get a move on. So, let's see when you twig, because you might twig immediately. Okay. Okay, so Marshall... So I do know this, then? Maybe. Okay. I don't actually know how much you know. Mm -hmm. Marshall Bruce Mathers III was born on October 17th, 1972. I know the name. Okay. But you don't know who yet. Fucking Eminem or something. Yeah, no, you got it straight away. Oh, oh, you're going to do a whole... Okay. Yeah. It did, that, he's got a really interesting life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he's born in St. Joseph, Missouri, the only child of Marshall Bruce Mathis Jr., because uh, he's the third, uh, mm-hmm. and Deborah Ray Nelson. His mother nearly died during her 73-hour labor with him. What? Which I left in here because I thought that was really interesting that it lasted that long. How horrifyingly long. That is, yeah. Uh, Eminem's parents were in a band called Daddy Warbucks. That's a crap name. <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> brutal. <laughs> uh, so his dad actually left the family and moved to California and had two other children. Oh. Uh, Eminem is outspoken about his distaste for his father. Fair enough. Uh, Debbie later had uh, another son, Nathan. Deborah. What? <laughs> you said Debbie. What's her name? Yeah. It's an abbreviation of her name. I know. I just Why? wanted to follow that up with it. That uncomfortable voice. Again. Okay. During his childhood, uh, I think Luke just fell. <laughs> <laughs> During his childhood, Marshall and Debbie shuttled between Michigan and Missouri, rarely staying in one house for more than a year or two, and living primarily with family members. In Missouri, they lived in several places, which we don't care about. Yeah, fair. You know, I don't know. I them. don't know anywhere in America, like. I'm not even sure where that is. So Missouri. There's no, yeah, so there's no point in giving me further I subsections. I think it's the Midwest. Uh, as a teenager, Eminem wrote letters to his father, but according to his mum, Debbie... Deborah. <laughs> they all came back marked return to sender, which is pretty heartbreaking. Uh, He's probably sending them to the wrong place. Right? <laughs> his mum just gave him like his own address. <laughs> what is she's doing is she's stamping it with return to sender. <laughs> she's never posted them. Friends and family remember Marshall as a happy child, but a bit of a loner who was often bullied. One bully... Didn't he get, like, beaten up until he was in a that's, coma? That's this story, Leia. Oh, You're yes! Ahead of the game. I am on the ball today! You are, he did, in fact, get bullied. Now, I do have the name of the bully. It's D'Angelo Bailey. Uh, he, yeah, he, he injured his head and uh, put him into a, a coma. Uh, Debbie actually filed a lawsuit against the school in which that happened in 1982... Now, I've heard actually multiple reports of this. This is really annoying. Okay. Some sources say it was dismissed, and some say that they got $10,000. Right. I don't know which is true. Um, but in this particular piece of information that I found, it said that the case was dismissed because the judge said that schools were immune from lawsuits. I feel like that's not true. Yeah, well, certainly not now. Uh, true. Eminem spent much of his youth in a working class primarily black Detroit neighborhood. I don't know why I said it like that. I didn't really mean to. I didn't really mean to stress black so hard. Uh, now it's weird that I've said black so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Even though black is not a swear word, people treat it like it is. It's descriptive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you don't want to be called black, tell me and I won't. If you do, that's fine. I don't care. Don't call me Matthew. I'll fucking hit you. Matthew. I'll fucking hit you. <laughs> uh, so Marshall and Debbie, will, uh, his mum, were one of three white households on their block, and Eminem was beaten by black youths several times. Okay. As a child, he was interested in storytelling. You can... Can you hear Lou on the mic? <laughs> yeah, I can. I hope that you all can hear Lou practicing um, in true acoustic style on the day of the gig. <laughs> He's doing Shake It Off. Uh, so Eminem aspired to be a comic book artist before he discovered hip-hop. He heard his first rap song, Reckless, featuring Ice-T, on the Breakin soundtrack, which was a gift from his mum's half-brother, Ronnie Polkinghorn, whose name I included because it's funny. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, you get off the fucking internet. What are you doing? I listen to you. I'm organising. God damn And it. I am listening to you. Uh, yeah, she says that. Also, right who the hell is Ice T? <laughs> you said someone like Ice T. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is that? What are you talking about? You said something about someone with that name, and I was like, that's a you dumb name, You don't know who Ice-T is? No. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised I know who Eminem is. Okay, all right, never mind. Uh, he's, a, he's a rapper. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? It does. He's well. a famous rapper, but I, what else can I say to you? I don't know. Uh, okay, anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can hear Lou singing. Uh, when Polkinghorn committed suicide in 1991, Eminem stopped speaking for days and didn't attend his funeral. Huh. I don't believe anyone should who attend funerals. Who is the person, though? Who, I don't know why. Who is it to him? Polkinghorn. I don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> I said it's his half-uncle. Oh, his half-uncle. Yeah. Oh. His uncle. His uncle. <laughs> or Hankel? Um, Hankel. Hankel's better. <laughs> uncle sounds like a hot uncle. Yeah, whereas yeah. Hankel definitely sounds unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he was his musical mentor. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Uh, Eminem's home life was seldom stable. He frequently fought with his mother, whom a social worker described as having a very suspicious, almost paranoid personality. Hmm. When her son became famous, Debbie was unimpressed by suggestions that she was a less than ideal mother uh, and said that she was responsible for his success. Which is true in a way, if she'd let him die, he wouldn't have been uh, successful but also yeah that's a, don't give me that i'm responsible for your success thing because oh yeah like, that's nonsense yeah like sorry he it's true to the degree that she birthed him and looked after him like and probably gave him enough nightmare fuel to make yeah. <laughs> a lot of songs mm-hmm. so uh in 1987 debbie allowed runaway kimberly and scott to stay at their home and several years later eminem began an on and off again relationship with her she is the mother of his kid uh, Didn't know he had a kid, to be honest. He does. She's 21 now. Oh, oh, wait. I think I did see someone about that, because you always see these, oh, guess how old you yeah, are. Yeah. And I'm like, this, I never know who these people are. This is going to make you feel old. You yeah, know. and it's like, I don't actually know who they are. So. Now, so after spending three years in ninth grade due to truancy and poor grades, he dropped out at age 17. Uh, he was interested in English, but he never liked literature, preferring comic books. Uh, incidentally, apparently, he has like a massive comic book room in his house. And he's got the first appearance of Spider-Man uh, in, in comic book form. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, although uh, he worked several jobs and helped his mother pay the bills, later maintained that she often threw him out of the house anyway. When she left to play You'd Bing... be annoyed if you were paying bills and someone chucked you out. Yeah, you? I'd be like, pretty nah. pissed off. Like, that's a waste. Nah, let's have words. That's not how rent works, is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, when she left to play bingo, he'd blast the stereo and write songs. Uh, at age 14, Eminem began rapping with high school friend Mike Ruby, and they adopted the names Mannix, uh, Mike oh, Ruby. no! Okay. And, then his, and then M and M, which is Mike and Marshall, and then that evolved into Eminem, which is his rap name. That's a, a surprising... I thought it was going to be more literal than that. Like, no, it's just... Well, that's pretty literal, Eminem. Uh, no, I, yeah, I know or it's come from, it but I thought it was... Um, no, I thought it was from the sweep, definitely. No, yeah. I thought it was because um, uh, I thought it might have been his initials or something, like MM. Yeah, I think, like I think it just works out as a lot of things. Yeah. I thought and it was this... just him, not him and someone else. He's probably, I couldn't find a video of him explaining it personally, so... It, this it... could be speculation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so he struggled to succeed in a predominantly black industry, but he was appreciated by underground hip-hop audiences. When he wrote verses, he wanted most of the words to rhyme, so he wrote long words or phrases on paper, and underneath worked on rhymes for each syllable. Uh, and apparently, even though the words didn't like, make sense, uh, the sentences didn't make sense, it just helped him practice sounds and rhymes, which incidentally is what I do. Okay. And uh, Do you I... do that because you read that that was a good No, I've been doing that since yeah. I was about six, uh, 14. Okay. Uh, it's just good practice. And maybe I, the person who told it to me got it from him. Yeah, then. okay. But uh, I, someone just gave me that advice. Uh, so, now we're up to, like, 1992. His reputation is growing. Oh, no. He's, okay. he's becoming more egotistical. He's recruited by several rap groups. The first was the New Jacks. That's a terrible name. Yeah, wait for the next one. Soul Intent. I like that more. Yeah. How is it spelled? Soul as in the soul inside of all of okay. us. Okay. Not I am one person. Or as in, like, or a your shoe, shoe soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, they released a single on the 1995 self-titled EP featuring Proof, who then teamed up with Eminem and four other rappers to form The Dirty Dozen, 
That's it's, pretty good name. I mean, it's pretty annoying that there's six of them and they formed a rap group called the Dirty Dozen. Maybe that's why it's a Dirty Dozen because they're just lying about the name <laughs> Dozen. Of them. <laughs> Maybe they all like have a like a cardboard cutout that stands next to them. Like it's just them twice. Oh. What? So there are technically 12 of them. Yeah, maybe. In a way. Yeah. Like, it took you way long to get that because you were typing on your phone, and then the response was not amused at all. No. <laughs> it was... I'm not happy with that as a solution. <laughs> Can they have, like, other cut- cutouts of other people? That would be fun. No. You know what? No. Like, I want us to be like, oh, yeah, we'll be the next, we'll be, I don't know, uh, something. We'll also be the Dirty Dozen, but we'll have, like, a cardboard cutout of Rowan Atkinson and the Queen. And, and what's his name? Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eminem had his first run-in with the law at age 20 when he was arrested for his involvement in a drive-by shooting with a paintball gun. The case was dismissed. A drive-by shooting with a paintball gun. <laughs> it's a bit of a letdown. Uh, you wanted him to actually kill someone. Well, no, I didn't want it to be him. What? <laughs> <laughs> were, well, I assume he didn't actually do it. He probably did. Well, I don't know, because it's involvement. Yeah, but that seems... means he probably did it. Mm. Come on. He's a nut. He's like, great, but... Involvement uh, is normally just, I was there. But anyway, the case was dismissed. Oh, why? So, uh, the victim didn't appear in court. I assume Did he was kill shot to death with paintball guns. <laughs> Thought it'd do it, wouldn't it? Uh, Eminem was soon signed to Jeff and Mark Bass's FBT Productions and recorded his debut album, Infinite, for the independent web entertainment label. It was a commercial failure. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, sad. One lyrical subject of Infinite was his struggle to raise his newborn daughter, Haley. Uh, Haley, that's her name. Yeah. Mm. He later names the song Haley's Song. It's a really good song. That's cute. During this period, Eminem's rhyming style primarily, primarily, prim, primarily inspired by rappers <laughs> Nas, Esham, and Az. I don't know if I'm saying any of these right. Lacked the comically violent slant for which he later became known. The feedback he did receive was, "Why don't you go into rock and roll?" <laughs> Which uh, he didn't. He didn't like. Um. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Like, no one wants to be told they're in the wrong genre, mm, no. whereas some people very much are. And he so. proved them wrong. Well, yeah, he's successful. Yeah. That's proof enough, really, isn't it? At this time, Eminem and Kim Scott lived in a crime-ridden neighborhood, and their house was robbed several times. I don't know why I said it like that. I just kind of wanted to put emphasis on how many times it was. And was Wait, can you do the times. whole thing in, in a... Well, not Tim Curry, because most of the last episode was Tim Curry's voice. All right. What, what else can you do? Uh, give me a person. Say a person. Uh, the Grinch? I actually have no idea what the Grinch sounds like. Neither do I. I don't what know what the fuck it <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? It? Mike Myers, isn't it? No. Mike Myers is Cat in the Hat. The Grinch oh. is Jim Carrey. Oh, Jim Carrey then. Uh, what does he sound like? I don't know. Um, uh, d- this is there's a reason that I'm not doing it. Oh, what? Oh, it's a movie by Jim Carrey where he sounds like Jim Carrey. I don't know. Uh, no, this is a bad one. Cable apparently. guy. I haven't seen it. No, I've seen Cable guy. No, you know what? That's not one of his big popular ones. It's weird that you've seen it. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's like unusual. That's the one you think of instead of like Bruce Almighty. I do like Cable Guy. I think Cable Guy is the weirdest one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is why I like it. His dark performances. I think. You know what's really good is um. Oh, the one about going inside someone's mind. Eternal oh. Sunshine and Spotless Mind. I actually haven't seen that either, but it's I've really, seen it well advertised. It's really good. Anyway, um, several times. Uh, I, I can't say it in Jim Carrey voice. Oh. Several times. Is that is that what he sounds like? That was like someone's got Mickey Mouse with his balls and a nutcracker. Ho, ho, ho. That was good. Uh, Eminem cooked and washed dishes for minimum wage at Gilbert's Lodge, a family-style restaurant. What is a family-style restaurant? Uh, I guess less posh. Okay. This, uh, that's a surprisingly valid statement. Yeah, that it? sounds pretty good, actually. His former boss described him as becoming a model employee as he worked 60 hours a week for six months after Hayden's death. Oh, um, no. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, don't know who that. No. I, mean, yeah, I guess if he's just washing dishes, he, he needs to get that money for his daughter. Maybe he does it Einstein style, where he does, like really repetitive tasks and is able to just let his head tick over and this is when he is signed and as well that's so. what happens then he just he's ticking over so much that he gets yeah. he gets shit done uh so he was fired before christmas and later said it was like five days before christmas which is Haley's birthday and he had like 40 dollars to get her something i think it's really sweet that his thought was i need to get my daughter a present for christmas yeah that is nice uh after he sounds like a good dad actually. yeah after the release of Infidel, his personal problems and substance abuse culminated in a suicide attempt. 
Uh, Sounds about right, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> uh, and then 1997, uh, he was fired and he lived in his mother's mobile home. But enter Slim Shady. Oh, yes. A sadistic, weird, didn't they? violent alter ego. The character allowed him to express his anger with lyrics about drugs, rape, and murder. In the spring of 1997, he had recorded his debut EP, the Slim Shady Each P. 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 Which was released that winter by Web Entertainment. The EP with frequent references to drug use, sexual acts, mental instability, and violence. Just how I say violence now? And violence. Uh, also explored the more serious themes of dealing with poverty uh, and marital and family difficulties and, you know, whatever. Uh, blah, blah, blah. After he was evicted from his home, Eminem went to Los Angeles to compete in the 1997 Rap Olympics, an annual nationwide battle rap competition. And he placed second. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's fair. But his attendance caught the attention of one record producer, uh, Dr. D.W. Dre. That is... Uh, D.W. Dre. That's not his name. Yeah, I was going to say, please <laughs> say that's not right, because that's wrong. It's just Dr. Dre. Uh, he, who, as you know... Why is, that, cause I, why is that his stage name? I actually have no idea. Okay. So I, I we'll do a Can different I episode. Can You sure. But yeah, you got to listen as well. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to check if you listened. Okay. Dre recalled, In my entire career in the music industry, I've never found anything from a demo tape or a CD. And when Jimmy played this, I said... You'll find him, Jimmy. You'll find him now, see? Yeah, I liked him then. Uh, he'd later state on the fourth and last episode of The Defiant Ones, which I have no idea what that is, uh, I was like, what the fuck, man? And who the fuck is that? And I changed his voice. I liked the previous voice. Yeah. I said, I was like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck is yeah, that? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's funnier. Uh, expressing his shock towards Mather's rapping talent. Although his associates criticized him for hiring a white rapper, he was confident in his decision. He said, I don't give a fuck if you're purple. If you can kick it, I'm working with you. I guess that's how Dr. Dre <laughs> sounds like in, in canon of musician versus musician. Um, in other news, I've just Googled the Dr. Dre thing. Um, it's a really boring reason. Um, it's because his name's Andre. Oh. <laughs> Apparently he started out as like uh, the master of mixology. Then he was Dr. J. Mm-hmm. And then he was Dr. Dre. Okay. Which is really boring. All right, I'm going to skip out a little bit and skip to 2002, which is when oh. he released the Marshall Mathers LP. Which What's the is, difference between uh, EP and an LP? What EP is, is extended play. LP is limited. Oh, okay. So what's... Shorter. Yeah, but what what's the length? I'm pretty like, sure it's just like one I was going to say, wouldn't song. that just be a single? Uh, I think it's what when it became singles. Oh, is it just a different name? But I actually am not sure about that. You can probably fact check that. Yeah, okay. You going to fact check that? Yeah, I'll fact check Are you going to fact check it whilst we listen to... We're going to listen to two songs. Okay. Only two. Because there's so many that I wanted yeah. to listen to and that I had to listen to for this. But we're going to listen to the real Slim Shady, which is the one that we're going to talk about now. Uh, LP is not limited play, it is long play. Oh, okay, there you go. That's why. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so let's listen to the real Slim Shady. My bum is on your lips, my bum is on your lips. Anyway, right, so we just listened to the real Slim Shady. And then um, no, the Bum didn't. Bum song. <laughs> well, now it's canon, I have to leave it in. Yeah, you do. Um, so... What I think is interesting about that is that already he's set, like, a precedent for himself and what kind of rapper he is, like... A prick. Already he's got, like, homophobic slurs in there, diss on feminist women, a little crack about his race. He is kind of a dick. What do you mean, kind of a dick? He's just a dick. I think he's a dick, but I like him. Mm. I like that dick. Mm. I love that dick. Just do you. Yeah. <laughs> Someone please edit out me saying that and no, use it. No, please in leave it in. Inappropriate times. Like, I want you to. I'm just going to create a supercut of after everything I say. Just, after every I sentence I dick. say in Rocky Horror, you can be like, I love that <laughs> dick. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, it was a success despite controversies and Eminem's insults and dubious claims about celebrities. For example, that <laughs> Christina Aguilera had performed oral sex on Fred Durst and Carson Daly. I assume you don't know uh, who any of those people are. I know Fred Durst. Is. Fred Durst is uh, Limp Biscuit. That's the one. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair. Uh, what about, yeah, he, what about I, Carson Daly? No. Christina Aguilera. She's a singer, isn't she? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I love her. I'm sure you were. No, no, she's she's a pop singer. Yes. Yeah. And Fred Durst is of Limp Biscuit. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a complete tool, fun fact. Mm, interesting. Yeah. They've got a real rivalry with System of a Down, actually. They hate each other. Um, well, 
That's fair. The more you know. Yeah, I, I guess I don't really know who's better. System of a Down. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and it's. I think the reasoning was stupid. Like, um, Fred Durst had just didn't like them as musicians, so tried to get them kicked off a festival on the day they were playing and stuff, because he was like, we're more important than you. And then Serge was like, um, you're not more important than anyone. We've all been invited to play here. And he didn't <laughs> like having a valid reason thrown at them, so they're not friends anymore. The more you know. Uh, so Eminem performed, he, despite the, uh, the gay, uh, the homophobic allegations, Eminem performed with Elton John at the 43rd Grammys Award uh, in 2001. They're actually best mates. Really? Yeah, apparently, like, Eminem, uh, Elton John helped Eminem get uh, sober. That's nice. Yeah. It's just, it's just interesting and weird seeing... There's something, yeah, there's something I instinctively like about Elton John. Because obviously, musically, it's not for me, but, like... It's just friendly. Yeah, he like just seems like chat. a nice dude. Yeah. yeah. I like him. Uh, also Gives he... me a little bit more faith in Eminem that he's friendly with Elton John. But then Elton John could be a dick for all I You know, I think a lot of this is, is it's a just character a show, isn't Eminem it? it's not puts real. on, it's yeah. rap posturing. Like, I feel like people need to recognise that the person you are on stage is not you. Oh, yeah, totally, you know. Uh, anyway, um, what was I saying about blah, blah, blah. Uh, we did Christina Aguilera was the last. Well, we just spoke about... Okay, so the Eminem show was released in 2002. It was another success. It reached... Reached? That's a word. Yeah. Reached. Number one on the charts and sold over 1.3 million copies during its first week. Nice. The album single, Without Me, denigrates boy bands, which you can get on with. Yeah, I, I'm on board with that. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, fair. Uh, Does he also not like Limp Biscuit? He also doesn't like Limp Biscuit. That's a pretty common opinion. I think a lot of people don't get on with Limp Biscuit, to mm-hmm. be honest. He dissed Moby as well. Do you know who that is? I know the name. Techno artist. Yeah, I couldn't Moby, have told you who it was. Moby was pretty chill about it. Apparently, he's like, it's just good he's advertising just banter, for me. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm glad. Like, oh no, you've got me so many more views. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, his, although at the time it would have been listens. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sales. Yeah, it, it was certified diamond, and it kind of examines the effects of his rise to fame, his relationship with his wife and daughter, and his status in the hip hop community, and even addressed an assault charge brought by a bouncer he saw kissing his wife. Uh, who I, I assume he beat the shit out of the bouncer. Well, it depends, because like if the wife was into it, then maybe you want to have words with her. Whereas well, if she was attacked, then well, fair enough. Well, they are divorced. So yeah. Okay. Put it like that. Like, and he has written fair. songs about murdering her. Yeah. Okay. So whatever it was, it wasn't good. Yeah. Like I've never understood that. Like I will beat up the man that cheats on my wife with you know cheats on me with my wife. And I it's like if it's a close friend. If it, yeah, if you know them, mm. then yeah, obviously that's that's a dick move. But if it's just a rando, they've got absolutely no interest in keeping your marriage afloat. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see why it's their problem, but there we are. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not saying they're right. <laughs> I just, uh, like, maybe you want to have words with your wife, not the dude she's cheating on you with, you know? Yeah, that's been Leia's uh, that's therapeutic this, advice yeah. for the week. Uh, I need to get something nice out of this, considering most of it's going to be slurs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on December 8th, 2003, the United States Secret Service said that it was Jeez. looking into allegations that Eminem had threatened the president of the U.S. Um, in a song? Or just... Yeah, okay, so these are the lyrics. Um, in, in his song, We as Americans. We Fuck. as Americans? Yeah, we, we as Americans. <laughs> oh, as. We as. I thought it was like an allergy style, we as Americans. <laughs> uh, Fuck money, I don't rap for dead presidents. I'd rather see the president's dead. It's never been said, but I set precedents. I feel like that's a bit of an overreaction to investigate. Yeah, obviously it is, and obviously they didn't. Like, it was clear that they just, like, said it to shut people up. Yeah, they were like, oh, look, we care. Yeah. Uh, Encore was uh, his next album. It was released in 2004. It was another success. Its sales were partially driven by the first single, Just Lose It, which contained slurs about... Do you want to guess which celebrity he went after? Oh, I don't know. Michael Jackson. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Uh, because of his public, like, child issues. Yeah. Abuse. I'm, I think it, they're still allegations, but I think they're quite widely accepted to be not allegations as such. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, a week after the release of Just Lose It, Michael Jackson phoned the Los Angeles-based Steve Harvey radio show to report his displeasure with uh, the video, um, of the Eminem video, which parodies Jackson's child molestation trial, plastic surgery, and the 1984 incident when Jackson's hair caught fire during the filming of a commercial. 
I mean, to be fair, I can see why he's annoyed about that. I mean, yeah, sure. In the song, Eminem says, that's not a stab at Michael, that's just a metaphor, I'm just psycho. Which, you know, sure, you are, but um, also. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, many of Jackson's friends and supporters spoke out against the video, including Stevie Wonder, who described it as kicking a man while he's down. I mean, it's just very, like, it's, uh, it's, it is slander. Like, they are allegations. They're not proven. No matter what you believe, it's still slander. Like, do, you want, do you want some hypocrisy? Yeah, sure, I'm ready. Okay, so Eminem stopped uh, Weird Al Yankovic from parodying one of Eminem's what? songs. Oh my god, get a grip. And it's Weird Al as well. Weird Al doesn't mean bad by anything. Yeah. He's, he's a nice, uh, yeah, he's, he's, oh, he's, he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he, I, I've heard that he's, he's really good about everything. Like, he will always ask for permission regardless of whether he needs to. Yeah, he, he doesn't need to. Exactly, but, yeah, it's uh, parody. It's very, very nice of him. And, yeah, it is. He, yeah. he seems like a solid dude, to be honest. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he... he Eminem didn't let that happen because he want, he was afraid that his uh, his image would be affected. Uh, Eminem has n- not really spoken out about that. Yeah, fair. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, gone. Um, I'm just gonna hope everyone forgets about that. <laughs> but he's he's quite a political fella. Eminem. He spoke out against uh, against the the war in Iraq. You know, President Bush called uh, called for war in Iraq, as as you well know, before your time. It's yeah. not. It's not before your time. It's two thousand three. Yeah, uh, it was alive. <laughs> yeah, the song criticized President. It's called Mosh, and it criticized George W. Bush uh, as this weapon of mass destru- destruction that we call our president, uh, with lyrics including "fuck Bush," which, taken out of context, means something entirely different. Means yeah, not the same <laughs> thing at all. <laughs> Uh, Eminem released now the, the source that I found for this was really funny because they felt the need to specify that Eminem released the video for Mosh on the internet which in at the time was weird yeah because you release it on MTV or something but uh, but also now you're just like yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it took me a while to realise that was important. <laughs> yeah, that that was actually a relevant comment to make, not just a random thing that someone had added on, like... Uh, he also called, he, like, at the end of his video, it says, like, when to vote, like, the day of the voting. And after Bush's uh, re-election, the video's ending was changed to Eminem and the protesters invading the White House <laughs> during a speech by the president. Uh, so, yeah, he's not a fan of President Bush. Yeah, that's fair to say. That's I think fair. a lot of people weren't a fan of Bush. Yeah, uh, because he was an idiot. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely don't know enough about it. To... He's literally yeah. a stupid man. Yeah, fair. Uh, I'll take your word for it, like. In 2005, industry insiders speculated that Eminem was considering ending his rapping career after six years and several multi-platinum albums. Uh, rumours began early in the year about a double album to release later that year entitled The Funeral. Um, but he kind of said... What did he say? I've got his actual words here. He denied that he was retiring. He suggested that he might take a break. He said, I'm at a point in my life right now where I feel like... Wait, do you want me to do an Eminem impression? Yeah. Okay. I'm at a point in my life right now where I I feel like I don't know where my... uh, Terrible. It is terrible. (laughs) Where my career is going. This is the reason that we called it Curtain Call, because this could be the final thing. We don't know. Um, But then he he did release something the next year. I was going to say, yeah, he got over it then. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, during an interview with 50 Cent, he said that he was kind of in li- in limbo and debating about if he'd release another album. He said he's always in the studio, but he doesn't know. Which, you know, is just kind of cue for artists to release another album. Well, yeah. Which he did release in, uh, in 2009. It was called Relapse. Him and Dr. Dre got back together and, and made something, which is an album that I actually like quite a lot. It's pretty okay. Okay. Yeah. It, um, yeah, it's decent. Relapse, the, vid- the the first, was released on May 19th. Its first single and music video, We Made You, had been released on April 7th. It didn't sell as well and received kind of mixed reviews, but it was it was a commercial success and got him, like, back in the, in the media. Uh, and then he was set to release a sequel album to that called Relapse 2, which is stupid. Yeah. And you'd call it Re-Relapse, obviously. Or just laps, because they cancel each other out. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, but in, in the end, he called it recovery. Oh, okay. He kind of said that he'd planned for Relapse 2 to come out, but uh, he he realised that he was making not a sequel album, another record, which makes sense. Yeah. Someone's singing Over the Rainbow downstairs. Aww. I don't know if it's being I picked it's... up. 
It is moving a little a bit. A little bit. Yeah. It's, it's, I'll probably have to dial it right up. Uh, Billboard reported that it was the best-selling album of 2010, making Eminem the first artist in Nielsen SoundScan history with two year-end best-selling albums. It's, it's the best-selling digital album in history, and its first single, I'm Not Afraid, I'm Not Afraid. Yeah. Yeah, you've heard yeah. that. Uh, was released on April 29th and debuted atop the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff about how great Eminem is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of this is copy and pasted. A lot of it I wrote myself, and then I realized that I was just writing it out the same. Yeah, what's the point, like? Yeah. Uh, anyway, 2012. He's working on his next album. It's scheduled for release the next year. And he decides to label it. Now, this guy's not apparently the most imaginative with names. He was going to name something Recovery 2. He just names this one the Marshall Mathers LP 2. Yeah, that's a crap name. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's one thing we've got going for us is uh, bizarre names for things. No, we'll, we'll decide when we have a second one, yeah? Mm. I think with one, you can't... Oh, no, but I mean in general. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we're, we're pretty, pretty good, good at... Uh, yeah. Uh, so its lead single, Berserk, was released on August 25 and debuted at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Which is pretty good. Uh, one of those songs that he released was Rap God, which is the next song we're going to listen to. It's going to be yeah. the last one Eminem song we listen to because its verse is incredible. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Try, and I, I do want to like, try and get into a habit of us, when we listen to something, of us actually being able to say something using our different interests to teach the other one about something in the song. Okay. So we're going to try. Okay. Okay, let's have a, a test this week. That was Rap God. You got anything to say about it? So what you wanted from this was to bring our... Expertise. Our, our skills. You've picked a song with absolutely no rhythm section in it. I, I actually wanted to get your opinion on this, which is kind of why I picked it. <laughs> like... Okay. How does it affect the song in a way that I can't tell? I think it's really boring. Okay. Um, if it was too, if they had much more, it would be too busy. Mm-hmm. But also, I I just think it's dumb. Like I just think, like it just doesn't do it for me. Uh, I think if you actually look at the lyrics, they don't really make sense. It's just nonsense that he's strung together to sound good. I don't. I, I don't actually agree. I think a lot of lyrics, a lot of the time, are kind of esoteric and like we don't. You, you kind of do have to do a little bit of homework to discover what he's talking about. But some of them are just sounds. Like when he's yakety yak, yak, yak. That is so he can catch up on his flow. Yeah. Like, like it's just, it all seems to me like then, he's just doing it for the sake of doing it, if you know what I mean. Oh, man. I just, I fucking, like, his flow is insane and his lyrics are so good. Like, I can see why you'd be interested in this as a lyricist. But as someone that works in the rhythm section, I couldn't give a fuck. You see, that's that's kind of what I wanted to to yeah. just kind of balance out like, me saying something good with you saying like, like another aspect. There of is the music. absolutely the music has given no thought at all. Mm -hmm. Like it's mm -hmm. just literally mm -hmm. just a track someone's put in the background because they couldn't. Yeah, it's not super complicated, is it? There's nothing going on. Beep, boop, 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 beep, it boop, basically boop, is a metronome. Boop. Yeah. I don't know why they bothered having more than that, to be honest. Um, I gotta pretend. Anyway, that particular album, which was called uh, The Marshall Mathers LP 2, was released on November 5th, and it did pretty fucking well. It debuted in the UK at yeah. number one on the UK albums chart. Uh, I don't know why white boys love it so much, white teenage boys. You don't know why? They love it. I think it makes them feel cool. No, why, why do you... Th you really don't know why. It's, no. It's super fucking obvious to me. No. I just... I've never got it. I've, I don't think I've... Ever, like, white teenage boys. Because he's an angry white boy. Yeah, I suppose they relate to it a bit too much. That's entirely the reason. It's just like, you know what, angry little teenage white boy, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. But also, it's good that they have a music. Uh, we, I should say we, as in a fellow angry white boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're coming up on the end now. I'm, I'm, I'm streamlining a lot of this. This is actually a lot longer than what I'm giving to you. Yeah. Um, in the summer of 2014, Eminem and Rosenberg, who yeah. I've skipped out of who that actually is, so you have to bear with me, uh, began using the hashtag ShadyXV on social networking sites. Why? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell you why. Well, I wanna know now. Well, figure it out. No. XV. I don't know. Fourteen. Wouldn't that be fifteen? Yeah, it would. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, that was dumb. That was dumb. All right, well, 
I don't know then. <laughs> <laughs> it was later revealed to be the name of an upcoming Shady Records compilation, uh, which is kind of boring. I don't know why I left this in, actually. I meant to delete this. Never mind. <laughs> uh, the official Eminem box set, a career-spanning 10-disc vinyl box set, was released on March 8, 12, 2015. They're really expensive now. That's okay. why I included this. I also think it's interesting whenever an artist releases, as it becomes that much of a brand, they can release something like that. Yeah, fair. I think it, that's, like, there aren't many bands who can actually do that who yeah. we've, like, grown up with. Mm. Like, if you think that Slipknot existed within my lifetime, uh, and they've done that kind of thing, and then Eminem, there aren't many that I know that actually are from our lives. Yeah, it d- depends on what age it was, I suppose. Mm. Like, it depends on what kind of age bracket you're in for, because obviously older bands are established in a way that younger bands are just not going to be. Mm -hmm. Like, we might well be saying this about bands that are smaller now. Yeah. In 10 years, they might be able to do that. Yeah, that's true, that's true. We're a bit Uh, young for it yet. Did you know that he's had two movies made about him? Um, Yes, I believe you told me that. Because I've seen one of them. Eight Mile. Yeah. And Southpaw is a boxing movie loosely based on his life. It's very, very loosely based, and I'm beginning to think that it's a lie that it was based on him at all. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> um, it's not a good movie, but the music actually is really good, so everyone listen to that. Uh, in September 2016, Eminem was featured in Skylar Gray's song Kill For You, uh, which it, I'm just trying to give you an idea of how many things this guy does. Like, I'm skipping out a lot of things that he does, but he does a lot of stuff. Like He keeps going. Despite people being like, ah, he's past it, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Uh, which brings us kind of like 2017 to the present day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're rounding up. In February 2017, Eminem appeared on No Favors, a track from Big Sean's album I Decided, in the song Eminem calls the newly elected President Donald Trump. Oh, a, yeah. A bitch. That and is true. Also raps about, uh, this is less tasteful. He raps about raping conservative social and political commentator and culter who's a Trump supporter. Uh, Ann Coulter responded to the lyrics, stating, I think it's unfortunate that the left, from Berkeley to Eminem with his rap songs, has normalized violence against women. Which is a really good response, yes. because he has? Yes, he has. So, like, it's it, playing the victim card and then playing the woman card is really, really decent response to pretty uh, nasty things said by Eminem. Uh, Starting in late October, Eminem and Paul Rosenberg began teasing what fans speculated was the title of a new album, titled Revival. Okay. It's Revival. I was just saying it funny because I thought you wouldn't understand what I was saying. Oh, I didn't understand what you were saying, so (laughs) congratulations. In the form of... What? Rexel. The band that you were in? No, the band that we had issues with. Rexel? It was Revival, but the way it was written made it look like it was... Yeah, that was your old band that you named. I didn't name them. She did. You na- You definitely named them. You told me that. Did I? I? Could, I'm going to clip that and put that in the podcast. You can if you want, because I am being oh, confused. My name's Leia, <laughs> and I named the band Rexel. Why do I always sound somewhere between an elf and Nessa? <laughs> That's the only voice I've got. <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyway, um, something about revival. Where was I? Oh yeah, he released a single, uh, Walk on Water, which was uh, featured Beyonce, who I don't care about and I don't get the fuss about. No, neither do I. So, it, great if you do, please explain it. Uh, I just I just think she's sensationalised for the sake of being sensationalised at this point. Yeah, I, I just don't understand at all. Um, despite an online leak of the album two days prior, Revival was released as planned on December 15th. It did pretty well. It became Eminem's eighth consecutive album to top the US Billboard chart uh, upon release, with 197,000 copies sold in its first week. And that's interesting, because you can already see the impact of, like, digital. Okay. Now, if you consider that his early album sold 1.3 in the first week... Uh, yeah, yeah. And this is in thousands instead, like, digital clearly made an impact on well, how yeah. like, streaming services that is what I mean, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, what you meant. As a result, he became the first musical act to have eight entries in a row debut atop the chart. Which is crazy cool. Like, he clearly clicks with somebody. 
Yeah, fair. Uh, it's me. He clicks with me. Yeah. On fair. August 31st, 2018, Eminem released his previously unannounced 10th studio album, Kamikaze, making his second full-length studio album into eight months. And you know what? It shows, because it's not very good. Um, yeah, I've been reliably informed it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we go, we're on to the fun facts before we round up. Oh, yeah. I love okay. this section. Uh, he won an Oscar. Really? Yes. Ah. One of the songs he wrote for eight months. It is really, really good. Um, he has a foundation that he made to help out starving children in Detroit. Oh, I see that kind of foundation. Yeah. <laughs> I did wonder what you meant. He's the most awarded rapper in history, which is That's hilarious. That's not a surprise. At it's all. hilarious that it a white person It is hilarious that, is... yeah, that a white person has done that. Jesus. Um, that probably says more than it should, oh, to yeah, be honest. I mean, um, <laughs> he's the first rapper to hit a billion views on YouTube. Uh, that doesn't surprise me either. Which was his song, Love the White You Lie, with Rihanna. Uh, what? That has anything to do with Eminem? I thought that was just a Rihanna song. Love the way... Yeah, it just features her. Uh, uh, I... This is Controversial Corner. Um, I hate Rihanna a Why lot. is that Controversial? I just, um, oh, shit, she's popular. Um, yeah. Sorry, go for it. Why? I just I just don't like her. She winds me up. Her voice winds me up. Her music winds me up. Like, I just... Every time I see her, I'm like, go away. <laughs> she's really pretty. I think she's got a good voice. I don't think she's pretty either. It just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, sometimes I wish I could edit in the looks that I oh that we yeah. give each other because like yeah, there's, there's, a lot of you baffled miss out. looks. Yeah, I just she doesn't do it for me. Yeah, I mean, I think it's because I don't like her music, but I'm just like no. That's fair. I don't really listen to her music. It's terrible. I like four or five seconds. It's really good. Oh no, that's no, it's so stupid. That's no, a really good song. Um, so I can see the look on your face. I know you think it's terrible. no. I really like. I legitimately <laughs> like the song. Uh, his biggest inspiration is music. In music, is the Beastie Boys, which isn't surprising. Uh, really? Yeah, that's I, don't, not... I don't. Th- I don't think that's surprising. I don't think that shows. You don't think it shows at all? No, no uh, it shows t- to a degree, but I don't. It doesn't oh, show no. that much. I heard that and I was like, yeah, dead on. But also, you've got to consider that you're only considering considering it lyrically. Yeah, that's true. Whereas, if you actually consider the rest of it, Beastie well, Boys are quite a lot. You know. Yeah, but obviously Beastie Boys are not just about the lyrics. No, which but is more why like lyric wise, that's that's what I hear. They're both angsty. Yeah, uh, that's dumb. <laughs> you 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 might like this. He lied about taking his daughter to Chuck E. Cheese so he could get his daughter to record some baby noises in a track about killing her mother. What does that have to do with Chuck E. Cheese? He lied about taking her to Chuck E. Cheese to the mum. Oh, I he see. Said, oh, you took I'm, it I'm right. Taking, yeah. Yeah, I was like, what What does that have, Why did Chuck E. Cheese ever say? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pretty funny. Uh, and here's a list of some of the celebrities that he's dissed Kim Kardashian, yep. Trump, Ann yep. Coulter, Pamela Anderson, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, the insane clown posse. Why Elvis Presley? Uh, I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm why. ICP. I don't know why ICP either. Hmm. Uh, Moby, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and Mariah Carey, who shot back at him. <laughs> <laughs> of course she did. And that's my report. And then the dude, and the dude now, that he's in a fight with. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe it's staged. It's, maybe it it's looks not. staged to me. But... Yeah, it looks staged to me. But yeah, that's my report on Eminem. I streamlined a lot of it. He had a really interesting life about uh, drug use. There was a while that he was addicted to, to pills... He's been addicted to all sorts of shit. It's very common in the music industry, though. Alcoholic, you know. Uh, and I just find him a real fascinating figure. Mm. Nobody really knows if he's been serious or not. Uh, I think he's more serious than I'd like him to be. I don't like his homophobic slurs. I don't like his sexist slurs. I don't yeah. like that he's a bit of a prick in general. But I just think he's very, very good at what he does. Mm, that's fair. Like, I don't... Uh, like, so I've been listening to his songs this week. I got some Eminem fans to recommend a bunch of songs, and he, it, like, you wanna you wanna hate people who say this and say they're not talented, right? But he is talented. Yeah. Like, I don't like what he says, but he he's very very skilled. So yeah, I'll accept he's good at what he does. I'm hmm. just saying I don't like what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's totally fair. But um, yeah, Eminem's a controversial figure. I'm probably yeah. going to put a little bit of um, Lose Yourself on the end of this. And you know what? I really want to watch 8 Mile. I, I really it. don't want to watch it again. I haven't seen it before. Is it not good? Um, I fell asleep. Um, and then was woken <laughs> up because apparently, you know, they, they have like the rap battle in what looks to be like a boxing thing. It's yeah. underground. Sure. Yeah, it's underground. Yeah. Um, uh, I fell asleep way before that and was woken up by... <laughs> 
by my ex-partner at the time that, that wanted me to watch it and made to watch just that scene and then was allowed to go back to sleep again and was like why are you putting me through this and that was that sounds horrible it was horrible yeah. like to be fair it could be pretty good that scene is just whatever happens now i'm going to be reminded of being very tired and confused i've seen it that scene and it is good Anyway, right, we're going to round up for this week. Next week, we're going to be back with probably some more music-based stuff rather than musicals or lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm thinking of doing a band next week. You're going to... Ooh! Um, mm, first time in fucking ages. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a couple of choices, actually. Okay, cool. It's going to be good. Maybe you can vote, listeners. That would be cool if we had some options. That would cool, be cool. Uh, we'll see what people think. Right. Well, how do I round this up? Socials. Socials. At Wild Abyss on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, MySpace. Spotify. Spotify, Amazon Music, all available. St- iTunes. iTunes. I always forget iTunes exists. Uh, yeah. Lists. Basically, all of the streaming sites. Yeah, listen to this if you want to. Or don't. I don't really care, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, do your own thing. Do you. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. Say your catchphrase, Leo. Eat well, live less. Be spaghettis. <laughs> Yours gets worse every week. <laughs> it's just, next week it's just spaghetti. It's just spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, bye. Oh, God. No, I'm not going to buy. I don't want to. I'm not going to stop recording. You can recording. crop out that bite. I'm not going to stop recording until you say bye. No. Well, then we're never going to leave. Okay, we'll stay here. Okay. We're doing another podcast off the bat. Okay, we're back. Well, good musician versus musician I've podcast got a, I've got slash gig. Podcast. <laughs> Wherever, are you actually going to keep going? <laughs> I don't want to. Well, <laughs> you have to say bye. Or... I've already said it once. Say it again. No. <laughs> I won't stop recording. <laughs> well, I'm just <laughs> going to sit here then. All right, fine. We'll sit here in silence. You're going to leave this on the end. Yep. <laughs> Tell you say bye. Nope. You're going to trick me into it. This is still going. (laughs) (laughs) This is terrible radio. (laughs) (laughs) This is the most committed I've ever seen you. (laughs) Fine. Have you seen the Drake and Millie, uh, Millie Brown? Thing? No, I haven't seen shit until you say bye. <laughs> bye, Leo. Lou, make us say bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hanging... Did you spill that? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not stopping the podcast until she says bye. I don't want to. You can't make me. Say, I will hit you. <laughs> hit me then. We've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm ready. Why aren't you saying bye? Because he can't, for a start, I've said it once. No, so you said it make... really badly. So yeah, it, so because the way every the fucking likes. week he decides that it's not good enough, so I'm just going no, to strike it is good it enough. Anymore. It was good enough last time. Can I say it instead of that? Yeah. You have to do it in a layer of Yeah, accent. do it in a really, really cheesy, thick Walsh accent. Say it close to the mic, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, please, oh, no. please, please, if you, please. Wait, if, please. You, if he does it, will you do it? Um. Yeah, fine. Fine. But you have to do it first. You have to do it in the mic, please. Wait, do I have to imitate him? Sure. Why don't you just do it in your voice and I'll do it in mine? Because that's boring. Yeah, come on. We've I, done, can't, I can't do We've it. done that for 30 episodes. Bye. <laughs> what am I American? Yeah, you know what? He no. can't do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Go on. He did his end of the bargain. I can't remember. What is it? You have to say bye. Just say bye. 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 <laughs>